In our last video, we helped Rivet City get rid of some bandits who were waylaying their water caravans. Despite the water being free, the difficulty of transporting water through a dangerous wasteland still makes it a rare commodity, and unscrupulous characters like Slackjaw were trying to profit from it. Our next task is to head to Megaton to try and track down some missing water deliveries. Bigsley told us that his caravans dropped off the water and got signatures, but Megaton keeps harassing Bigsley, saying they never got their water. Upon arrival, we find Mickey begging for water from a nearby traveler. Please, water. I'm so thirsty. Oh, poor dear. Here, I've got some water I can spare. For, for me? Crystal clear water? Oh, bless you. Bless you. No. Bless you. I'm glad to help. I haven't tasted water this pure. It's a, it's a, uh, uh, oh. Oh God, what's wrong? Water? Ah! What should I do? He asked for water, and I thought I was helping him, not killing him. Oh no, Mickey! He died from drinking aqua pura? This happens even if we didn't, in fact, project purity with modified FEV. How can we explain this? Slow down, we can say. What happened here? I just gave him some water I picked up on the way through Springvale. It tasted pure and it looks clean. How was I supposed to know? Accident, huh? Why should I believe that? No, please. I just wanted to share some of my water with him. How could that kill him? Sounds to me like you wanted him dead. No, I promise. I thought it would help. It was supposed to be holy water. The man at the monastery in Springville said it was blessed. It's okay. You couldn't have known. No, it's not okay. Not for him. Hmm. I'll look into it. Where did you get the water, Rosa? I thought it would help him. It was supposed to be holy water. The man at the monastery in Springville said it was blessed. He gave me this pamphlet along with the water. He called himself Brother Gerard. You can find him on the road through Springvale. They said they had lots of this holy water. Please do something to stop them. I can't stay here. Not after something like that. And with that, poor Rosa runs off. There's nothing we can do to save Mickey now. But at least now we have a lead. Taking a look at the pamphlet Rosa gave us. Holy water pamphlet. Good people of Megaton, your salvation is at hand. We are the apostles of eternal light. To heal this wounded city, we are willing to provide any and all supplicants with cleansing holy water. Come to our monastery in Springvale, and Brother Gerard will minister to your every need. We will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the waters of light. Bit of a corruption of revelations there. Another way to get this note is to head inside Megaton and walk to our player home. We find a note stuck to our door, and it's this same note. Heading towards Springvale, we pass the Red Rocket truck stop, and we find a man standing on the sidewalk. Approaching him, we discover the Holy Light Monastery, and he walks to us. Weary traveler, welcome to the Monastery of the Apostles of the Eternal Light. Oh, but you must be parched from your travels. Yet please, accept this gift. Holy water, blessed by our order. We must drink deep of the water of light, so that it may sanctify our tongues and render us purified for discourse. With that, he hands us a bottle of holy water. You must cleanse your tongue of unseemly speech by drinking deep of the holy water. Then we may speak. Oh, great. Does this mean we have to drink it first? After seeing what happened to Mickey, I'm not so sure. Examining it in our inventory, we see that it only doses us with 11 rads. Okay, well, we can survive that. Taking a sip. Well, sure enough, we get slightly irradiated, but at least now, Brother Gerard will talk with us. I can see the glint of Adam's light in your eyes. You have purified your tongue with the holy water. So now we may speak. How may this servant of the eternal light serve you? Thanks, but I'll pass. I've had bad luck with cults. As you wish, of course. In this cruel world, simple prudence says he who offers help in one hand conceals a knife in the other. But I assure you, we wish only to help the unfortunate and expose them to the eternal light that can guide us all to salvation. That is why we offer our blessed water to any and all who are athirst. The Apostles of Eternal Light? 
Is that just you? No, no, ours is a modest order. But our ranks are growing slowly as others hear our words and are enlightened. As our luminescent mother says, where others walk only in the dying waste, we offer the path of eternal light. And to spread goodwill, we offer this holy water to any and all supplicants. You know this water is full of radiation, right? It's full of Adam's light, if that's what you mean. Brighter and warmer than any water I've ever seen before. Blessing of the holy water is overseen by Mother Curie III, our luminescent mother. But her work keeps her busy within the monastery at all times. Sounds like a nice little setup you've got. Have fun poisoning people. Laugh if you want. But our good deeds shall not be corrupted by your cynicism. We will continue to help the needy. Blessing of the Holy Water is overseen by Mother Curie III, our luminescent mother, and she works tirelessly in our monastery to enlighten the world. I'm sure you mean well, but this has to stop. Stop helping the needy? I don't think so. And even if I did, it's not my decision to make. Blessing of the Holy Water is overseen by Mother Curie III, our luminescent mother, and she's far too busy to speak with outsiders. Well, tell me about your order. Ah... The Apostles of the Eternal Light were first introduced to the Majesty of Adam's Glow by the holy teachings of Confessor Cromwell. And we were content to stay in Cromwell's church until Adam gave a vision unto our Luminous Mother. She learned that Adam did not call for division, that sundering which drives us apart. Adam calls for enlightenment, the warmth which feeds us. For it is only through Adam's supreme and total enlightenment that we may attain salvation in eternal light. Where did you get the water? Our luminescent mother went to meditate outside of the city, and as she wandered in a trance, she was visited by Adam's angels of war. These angels brought her aqua pura, water so pure, so pristine, and so unsullied that she knew it would make the perfect vessel for Adam's glow. Since that day, she has busied herself consecrating Adam's pure water into the waters of light. Aha! Bingo! We found the missing water shipments. Angels of war, indeed. Look, your holy water is poisoned with radiation. No, it's full of Adam's light. It's a tragedy that not everyone is prepared to accept enlightenment, but such are the ways of the divine. Besides, we never force anyone to drink it. We simply give the opportunity to those who thirst for something more. I need to enter the monastery. I am afraid it is not open to the unenlightened. Your presence would contaminate our great works. However, if you are willing to be baptized in Adam's holy light, then perhaps I could allow you to enter and meet our leader. Okay, I tried asking nice. Let's do this the hard way. Must it really come to this? So be it. Hey! Brother Gerard drops like a sack of potatoes. On his body we find four pieces of holy water, another holy pamphlet, a key to the monastery, some stim packs, grenades, and a power fist. But supposing we don't want to do this the violent way, we can say, you mean I have to be irradiated to be allowed inside? Yes, call it what you will. We simply will not allow any who do not bear the light. Make your way to our tabernacle, pilgrim. Pray to Adam to fill you with holy radiance. Bask in the glow of Adam's eternal light. Look, I'm not going to irradiate myself to get in your church. I'm sorry, but I must insist. You simply cannot be allowed on holy ground without knowing Adam's light. Where you see radiation, we see humanity's salvation. And we can hardly allow the unsaved into our holy monastery now, can we? You may supplicate to Adam your desire for enlightenment at our tabernacle. All may bask in the eternal light. All may be filled with the glow. I have to go now. May Adam's light guide you. Oh, great. This is Wasteland Survival Guide all over again. Heading towards the church, we can loot a mailbox and a couple of suitcases just outside the door. And inside, we find a podium connected by wires to a bunch of radiation traps. We find a switch on the podium, and behind the podium, some whiskey and a camera. If we flip the switch... The radiation traps turn on! 
Ah, so this is how they've been irradiating aqua pura. But why would they go to the trouble to irradiate purified water? Doesn't make any sense. We can hang around the traps until our radiation level increases. We are now friend. slightly irradiated. Heading to Brother Gerard. May Adam light your path, traveler. We can pass a speech check to say, there, I've gotten a little irradiated. Can I go in now? Ah, I can feel the light within you. By all means, you are welcome in our sanctuary. Please, speak with our leader, our luminescent mother, Curie the Third. Or we can stick around until we get advanced radiation poisoning. Let's see here. Oh, 432. Yep, that's good enough. This time when we head to Brother Gerard, we see that we don't have to pass a speech option. I am consumed with Adam's light. Let me into your monastery. Oh, truly your light is second only to the sons of Adam themselves. You are more than welcome. Please speak with our leader, our luminescent mother, Curie the Third. And with that, he hands us the monastery key. Heading inside, we can next use our repair skill to disarm the radiation traps. There we go. No more irradiating aqua pura for you. But if they made these, they can always make more. To solve this problem, we need to enter the monastery. And to enter the monastery, we open the hatch in the southeastern corner of the building. And on the other side, we overhear a sermon. Children of the light, hear my words and feel Adam's warmth. For too long, our world has been barren and our people have become empty. Their hearts have become dry and cold and thirst consumes the weak and the strong alike. But we can save them for Adam's bounty has granted us the gifts of mercy and compassion. Oh, my brethren, let us share with them the waters of light. Let them be fulfilled by Adam. Let them know his glow and be truly enlightened. And let them live forever and walk with us in the grace of Adam's glow and never be empty again. Oh, oh my, I wasn't expecting a pilgrim to our shrine. We're hardly prepared for casual visitors, I'm afraid. You must have made quite an impression on Brother Gerard. He's a lovely boy, but rather strident. I hope he wasn't a bother. Oh, but where are my manners? I'm Mother Curie the Third, and I lead the Apostles of the Eternal Light. What can I do for you, my dear? Golly, James wanted to give him the waters of life. This lady wants to give him the waters of light. She promises them they can live forever, and she's kind of right. It'll either kill him or turn him into ghouls who live forever, so I guess she's not lying. But if we disapprove, we can say, I'm putting an end to your twisted cult right now. Ah, <sighs> we are accustomed to this sort of religious persecution. However, I refuse to respond to violence with violence. But she refuses to fight back. Well, all right, let's see what our other options are. Luminescent Mother, I need to speak with you about your holy water. Yes, if you wanted some, I'm sure that Brother Gerard would have gladly given you a bottle or two. We don't charge for charity, you know. Why are you doing all of this? Why, to offer enlightenment to all those who suffer, of course. No more, no less. Adam came to me with a vision. The starving, the ill, the weak, all being made whole and well by receiving the sacrament of Adam's glow. And so, with our holy water, we can make this vision a reality. When exposed to Adam's supreme glow, the ill are reborn in his glowing visage. Those reborn never hunger, never suffer, and never age. All our enlightened brethren need to know is Adam's glow, and they are happy. All right, a lot of misinformation there. Ghouls do get hungry. Ghouls do suffer. The only thing she's being honest about is that they never age. Enough cultist crap! This is sick! You are welcome to your own beliefs, of course, but I would ask you not to profane in our monastery. Or we can pass a science check to say, turning people into ghouls? But that requires an amazing amount of radiation. That's correct, it does. But we can work miracles with our holy water. Free of impurities, this aqua pura is perfect for carrying Adam's blessing. Sadly, only a small number of supplicants truly achieve eternal light. 
The rest must be satisfied with enlightenment and an end to their suffering. Death. Yes, you're talking about death. Killing people. That's why I'm here. How do you make your holy water? It was a gift from Adam. I was meditating right here in Springvale when four of his armored angels came to me. When I said I was from Megaton, they gave me barrels of aqua pura and said I should share it with my people. They were very clear on that. Naturally, I understood Adam's message. And so I've been busy blessing this holy water and sharing it with the world. Oh my gosh. These lazy Brotherhood of Steel just dropped it off with this lady, didn't even bother taking it to the gates of Megaton, which started this whole thing. Yo. Look, Mother Curie, you need to stop contaminating the Aqua Pura for your holy water. Don't be silly. How else will we spread the word to the unenlightened? So many misunderstand Adam and fear the glow of his light as a thing of destruction rather than humanity's next step toward perfection. With this marvelous holy water, they drink without fear, and by the time the glow consumes them, they have no need to fear ever again. If you don't stop, I'll have to make you stop. Forcibly, if I have to. If you feel you must resort to violence, then you will do so. I will not fight you. But I cannot say that my disciples share my commitment to peace. But again, she doesn't fight back. Or we can pass a charisma check to say, you can't trick people into enlightenment. They have to accept it knowingly. Hmm. You have a point. One cannot be forced into salvation against one's will. To do so would be unjust, even in Adam's name. Perhaps you're right. We must not use deception to spread the word of Adam's light. To do so would be to make a mockery of salvation itself. We will stop using the aqua pura for our holy water. We will save our ministrations for those who seek us out. And for some reason, that works. I don't know why. All she did is agree to stop tricking people into drinking the irradiated aqua pura. But she still needs to make the holy water for those who want it, right? Maybe she has enough stockpiled. But if we can't pass the charisma check, we can say, there must be something I can do to convince you. Give it time, child. Soon Adam will enlighten your eyes, and you will come to realize the truth for yourself. Look, I don't want to have to fight you. You never need to fight, my dear. But I'm afraid you simply aren't going to convince us to stop our holy work just because you disapprove. Isn't there some way I can convince you to stop? We're doing holy work here, tending to the suffering and hopeless. Our holy water gives warmth to those who would only die unsaved otherwise. At last, we can finally take the violent route by saying, This has gone on too long. Time to die. Ah, <sighs> tsk, tsk. Such a shame it had to come to this. With that, she flees, but her brothers do turn hostile. Drive. For Stop th doing that. Oh, oh, no but they don't prove to be much of a threat. However, when we go downstairs, we find the son of Adam. And Adam's champion. Goodness. And even at this level, they're very tricky. Or, instead of taking the violent route, we can say, What makes you so sure you're right anyway? Who are you to speak for Adam? I suppose it's a fair question. Ever since I was a girl, I knew I was destined for something special. I always resisted the feeling, <laughs> me, special? <laughs> but one day I fell asleep during one of the confessor's sermons. <laughs> And I had a dream. A dream of the prophet of Adam, ablaze with holy light. She told me of my destiny, of my mission. I was called to service, and I answered. The only being able to convince me I was wrong would be the prophet of Adam herself. I see. So she had a vision of this prophet of Adam. I think I can play the part. <clears throat> I am the prophet of Adam. Stop irradiating water. You may not agree with us, 
but you need not mock our beliefs. The prophet of Adam would be so aglow as to outshine the sun. You are not she. Oh, okay. So the prophet of Adam was aglow like the sun. That gives me an idea. But oh no, we disarmed the radiation traps upstairs. Doggone it, that would have made it so much easier. Heading downstairs, we can explore the basement. The ghouls are still here, but they're not hostile. We find scrap and containers filled with scrap. A refrigerator filled with non-irradiated foods. And a bunch of boxes on a shelf filled with aqua pura. Concrete evidence of exactly what happened to these water shipments. But lying on the ground next to a table covered in aqua pura is another radiation trap. And its switch is on the wall. Turning it on. We begin to accumulate 17 rads per second. Let's see exactly how far we can get. We are now sick with critical radiation poisoning, but we're only at 642. Let's let it go a bit longer. Ooh, we're now sick with deadly radiation poisoning, but let's see how far we can go. Where are we at now? 960. Yeah, let's edge that up just a bit. Okay, turn it off. And when we are irradiated as high as we possibly can without dying, we can again talk with Mother Curie the Third. May Adam be with you always. Are you well, dear? I am the prophet of Adam. Stop irradiating the water. <gasps> Why, you are the prophet of Adam. I didn't recognize you until now. Your eyes are aglow. Your very skin radiates with Adam's heat. I I didn't realize. Uh, my lord, now that you have revealed yourself to me, I do. Uh, I see the errors of my ways. Forgive me, for I knew not what I was doing. We will spread your word without the use of holy water. We will return the Aqua Pura to Megaton. It shall be a test. The worthy will seek us out, and finding us, they will find the message of Adam, drinking the waters of light in their souls. Yes! I leave you now, Lord. I cannot bear to look upon your shining face any longer. And with that, she agrees to stop using Aqua Pura. With the crisis averted, we can head back to our Megaton player home and heal ourselves and remove all rats. Okay, feeling much better. And when ready, we can head back to Project Purity to check in with Bigsley. What is it this time? I've stopped the cult that was stealing Megaton's water. Cult? There's something about Megaton, isn't there? It's apparently the place to start a cult these days. Hmm, guess I can start sending them water again. Hopefully they can keep their grubby hands on their shipments this time. Here. It's not much. Most of the assets have been exhausted, but take this. It's definitely worth getting lions off my back. <laughs> Thanks. And as a reward, we get 300 bottle caps. Heading out, we can travel back to Megaton to see if Bigsley will keep his word and send them another shipment of Aqua Pura. But when we arrive, we see a confrontation going on between the Brotherhood of Steel and some residents of Megaton. You've still got plenty of water. Look, the Brahmin is loaded with it. What you gave us won't last more than a few days. Hey, it isn't my call. I just take the water where the Brotherhood tells me. Don't shoot the messenger, you know? Look, they're giving the water away. What do you care whether you leave it all here or somewhere else? I don't really care. I mean, you'll have to take it up with those boys. You're not leaving here with that water. We need it. We're taking it. I hope you're not thinking about getting stupid on me. We just need the water. All of it. Sorry, pal, but you already got your quota. Our orders are to take the rest of this to Big Town. All right, let's move out. Come on, Joe. Help me get the water. Hey! Watch out! What? You guys are up there. Need some help with this wagon. The Megaton residents try to take the water by force, and the Brotherhood of Steel opens fire on them. If we allow this to happen, anyone from Megaton who sees this go down will attack the Brotherhood, including Deputy Weld and Stockholm. But they're no match for the Brotherhood, who likely kill them both. Oops, that got out of hand quick. 
They shot first, right? Uh, yeah. Water delivered to Megaton without incident. Morning. That's what my report will say. Or we can jump in and help the Brotherhood by killing these thieves. <laughs> But if we do, we get the same result. Only we turn Megaton hostile, because we have to kill Deputy Weld and Stockholm. And the Brotherhood doesn't even thank us for our intervention. Or, before things get out of hand, we can try to talk with the Brotherhood. What do you want? What's the harm in letting them have some extra water? You two? Fine. They can have the damn water. What do I care if Big Town doesn't get any? What do you care? With that, we gained karma, and we defuse the situation. But Big Town doesn't get its water. Or we can try to talk to the Megaton settlers. Can you believe these Brotherhood assholes? They won't give us enough water to last until the next shipment. We're not going to let them leave with that water, though. We need it. What are they going to do, anyway? Kill us for stealing some free water? It's none of my business. I'm just passing through. Typical waster. Those arrogant bastards. I'll back you up if you want to make a play for the water. Now you're talking. Come on, let's get that water. With that, they move for the water. But like last time, the Brotherhood opens fire, and we have to kill these soldiers to defend the Megaton settlers. <laughs> With the Brotherhood dead, the Megaton settlers loot water from the corpse of the dead pack Brahmin. Phew, I didn't think they'd open up on us like that. Prayer happy bastards. Shit, if the Citadel hears about this, we gotta clean up this mess before word gets around. And then they walk off. Or, instead of agreeing to back these guys up, we can pass a speech check to say, they look serious to me. Is this really worth getting killed over? Uh, you're probably right. They wouldn't think twice about murdering the lot of us, would they? We'll just have to make do until we can organize our own water caravans and get out from under the Brotherhood's thumb. Oh. Hey there. And with that, we gain Good karma. To Good to the see Megaton you. settlers return Good to, to Megaton, you. and the Brotherhood caravan heads for Big Town. Which of these options do you think is the best? Is it better to let Megaton steal the water destined for Big Town after all they've been through with the cult? Or is it better for them to just wait for the next shipment? or to organize their own caravan. And what do you think about Mother Curie and her bizarre cult? Was it smart to let her live? Or would it have been safer to just kill her and all of her loons to ensure this never happens again? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Our next task is to head to Underworld and check in with this ghoul Griffin. For some reason, he offered to buy water from the Brotherhood. Why? We'll find out in my next episode. I publish many Fallout videos each and every week, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. They come on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find the link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.